still think we're in this rainy season. I've got the rain jacket on today because it is a nasty, nasty morning. Look at this grass though. For people like us who farm and have animals, having this kind of grass this time of year is phenomenal. So I'm not complaining. So today's video is gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a list of things that we need to be prepared for as we see the grid issues happening. We're seeing the blackouts, brownouts. What if all of a sudden all our eggs are in one basket and we have a grid fallout? We have a solar flare, we have an EMP, we have something that's gonna cause our grids to be down for a long, long time. Let's talk about the long-term effects of a grid being down and how it can affect you, but how you have a solution to a lot of these things. This is gonna be a good video. Please watch to the end. We're gonna talk about some of the problems on the front end but ultimately talk about some of the solutions you need at the end. Video starts right now. Welcome to the Max. Thank you so much for being here. I say this every video, but I truly mean, you mean the world to me. And so I hope that you'll keep on watching, keep on sharing, keep on supporting our channel by giving us a thumbs up, by going down here, pressing subscribe, commenting. I love to see your comments. I love the constructive criticism. I love the, the extra information that you're giving us because you are gaining wisdom, but also you are being wisdom to the rest of the community. So thank you so much for coming along and being here today. So today's video is gonna be a good one. Just like I said in the intro, dangers of what's to come if all of a sudden we have a long-term grid outage However, we're gonna talk about the solutions to some of that and how you can keep your family safe. So we're gonna talk about some of the problems on the front end, some of the solutions on the back end. So please try to watch the whole video, share it with people who, who may not see the, the importance of prepping. I think that these videos are gonna do us well and your comments again are gonna do us well because we're building a community and learning how to take care of our family in some very troublesome times. When we see the situation in our world where uh, we start seeing grid issues. Now say for instance, we're seeing a little famine, a little drought right now. We're seeing third world countries have problem with food. But when we start seeing it here, meaning if all of a sudden we have a solar flare, our grid is not strong, it needs to be more strengthened. We've had some presidents and some of our leaders uh, want our grid to be stronger then we've had some not even given any thought. Now we're wanting more things on the grid. Now we've seen in, in Europe and we've seen in China their grid's already been a little compromised and so they're setting policies on when you can run certain things or trying to uh, hold back from using so much energy. If we get to that point, or if say we don't, say because of our freedoms, we say we're not gonna listen to the government and all of a sudden we have a solar flare, an EMP, or a grid shutdown because of overuse, what is that gonna look like for us? So now let's just kind of jump into the list of problems that's gonna be caused. Really, it's gonna be scary, disastrous, catastrophe, truths that you need to be aware of that you need to prepare for now we've done tons of videos on being prepared this is just going to add to it and as a homesteader as a sustainable regenerative farmer i'm trying to raise as much food as i can but ultimately there's still needs that i've got to take care of there's still solutions to other problems that i'm needing so again we're working together to make for a better community situation to deal with some of the things that we're going to see in the coming days, weeks, and months ahead. Now, number one is, is pretty easy. We've talked about this in, in just uh, in, in, in excess. I understand that. Anytime you see a storm that's coming, what do people do? They run to the grocery or they run to their Walmart or they run to some kind of food court and they start buying all they can in food, no matter if they eat it or not. So food will be in a shortage, not because of some of the other reasons that we've talked about, not because of supply chain issues, not because um, people are not growing as much and farmers are not able to put as much on the table. This scenario is everybody is starting to overbuy because they're scared to death, because they've not prepared before. Now, if you're prepared in food storage and you're prepared with My Patriot Supplier, you're freeze drying food like we're doing, or you're raising your food, a lot of times we're not the ones that's gonna have to run crazily to the grocery and store up on food. But you need to be providing yourself ways to do that now because when something happens, and we've seen it with storms, we've seen it with catastrophic events, we've seen it with the pandemic, people flock to the stores and buy up all the food. So therefore, there's no food. 
So you have to make sure you're prepared for the food shortage that will be coming. Food will be sparse. You cannot tell me in your local grocery store that it's fully stocked up and you can buy anything you want right now. We're still dealing with food shortage and supply, supply and demand issues right now. So if all of a sudden something happens, like a catastrophe collapse, a grid situation takes place, it's gonna get worse. So number one truth would be food will be sparse. Food at the grocery store will be sparse. Food coming back in distribution will be sparse. Number two, because our world is so connected to the grid and because we are so used to having all these accessibilities, number two is the same way with water. Now we have a well and we have a hand pump to that well. So a lot of people don't have wells. A lot of people live on city waters or rural waters or community waters. A lot of people depend on an electric pump for waters. A lot of people depend on their government to provide waters. Uh, we're looking for reservoirs to push water down to uh, us in these towns. So if all that and all the energy and all the electrical part of those movements are not able to be done, those pumps are not working, water will be in short supply. Now, you may have a body of water close, like this lake here, but for the fact of having true, true drinking water, cooking water, and water that you can use, it will be in short supply. Not because we don't have water, not because I don't have this big lake sitting beside me. It's because the pumps that typically push it through the purification systems and put it in our homes won't be there. I know a lot of people who are on uh, rural waters and on city waters, and even when they lose power, they still have water because the water lines are still running and there's still generators that can run a lot of that. But if we're talking EMP, solar flare, or grid down, this is not just, oh, I have a power, power outage because of trees on my line. This is, we've shut the whole grid down, which ultimately runs those pumps. So water will be very, very, very important during this kind of situation. It's a scary time when we start losing food and water. Number three is, is pretty scary because ultimately it's, it is making for issues for the rest of it. It's a domino effect. We talk about domino effects all the time. But number three, if we don't have power, we don't have water, we don't have food, then people are not gonna show up at work. So either we're gonna have unemployment issues or we're gonna have supply and demand issues or we're gonna have supply crisis because ultimately people can't go to work. They're having to take care of their family. They're having to find means for water. They're having to find means for all these other things, food. So they're not just gonna show up at work. Well, all of a sudden, these businesses that are part of, uh, you know, maybe a grocery, these businesses that are providing service-oriented jobs, it's going to cause issues all the way throughout. So if number three happens and people are not showing up for work, then that really starts a domino effect that we need to be paying attention to. So number three, employment issues and people not showing up at work. Now that's going to lead to major, major crisis. Because of that, it comes up to number four. Let's think about this for a second now. We saw this over the last two years. What did it do? Unemployment issues or employment issues and not being able to have field jobs, what did that do? That backed uh, hospitals up. That backed up the way we ran our typical needs and service-oriented jobs. So now we see issues with, with hygiene and medical. So number four would be, what if all of a sudden sewage can't be pumped out because there's no one running the pumps because there is no pump in the grid down. What if all of a sudden we can't get to the hospital? There's not enough nurses and doctors staffed because they can't get to work. Or they're doing the same thing we're doing. We're trying to fight as a world, trying to fight for what we're needing and trying to survive. So now we're seeing food and water be sparse. Now we're seeing employment and staffing issues as number three. Now what does that affect? It affects maybe your sewage. Uh, what are you going to do with all the sewage if you're still using your commode and there's no running water and you're pouring, you're, you know, you may be pouring, maybe you got ditch water or lake water or creek water you're pouring into your, your toilet to flush it. After a while, where is that sewage going? Especially for cities, especially for people who are tied to community style sewage. Uh, here I have a septic tank and in rural areas you see septic tanks. It could still cause issues, but pretty much it can still go. But for some people who are used to having sewage pumped out the same way they have water brought in, that could be a major issue. So now we see issues with medical, hygiene, and waste 
where's trash going to go? I, you know, I can go on a part of my property and bury or burn trash. But what does that cause? Are we worried about what's in the contaminant of trash? Are we worried about making a fire where people see it and all of a sudden they're like, well, hey, this guy's burning something. Maybe it's food. So now we're bringing attention to our property. So now staffing caused hygiene and medical issues. Civil disobedience, civil unrest, because there's no civil servants. So number five would be same situation. We have policemen, we have medical, we have first responders, we have firemen. All these people who are now doing the same thing that everybody else is doing, they're fighting to try to get some of their basic needs met for their families. They're not able to get the services they were typically used to. So they're not showing people work. What does that cause? That causes issues for uh, theft to happen, uh, for people to have unrest, to, to go to the streets and say, hey, what are we doing? What is the government gonna do for us? We're so used to government's hand and, and big daddy and big brother mentality that they're gonna just take care of us. So that makes for civil unrest, that makes for civil disobedience because we don't have the civil servants in place. Now, what does that cause? Well, the government is always ready for anything. I believe that. There's times where the government can then all of a sudden cause martial law. All of a sudden, National Guards and armies and militaries move in to, to, uh, to help with some of the situations that we're dealing with with civil unrest. Now, I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing, but what I am saying, if all of a sudden we see more martial law style uh, militarization and, and a national policing, that could cause a lot of issues for the people who are not causing issues. So it's a balance there. What does that look like? Is it give us more security or does martial law cause us more anxiety and issues? The dangers of losing some of the civil servants and local enforcements and local responders to now more of a nationalized style may cause the civil unrest to wane, but now we're looking at a national government who is now coming in and, and causing martial law. Maybe their excuse is because of the civil unrest, now we can control what's going on here. I remember during Katrina, uh, when we had Katrina, which was an 05 here in the South. Now we were, we're in South Mississippi, so yes, we got a ton of damage and power was out for weeks all in our areas. Uh, New Orleans, of course, and, and Louisiana was hit worse than us. We understand that. I'm not making light of that. But what I'm saying is for this area and this hurricane issues, people did a lot of these things that we were talking about. But then on top of that, the search and rescues got, didn't happen because of, of the issues with people not even being able to do it. Uh, food was gone. Water was gone. So we had government trying to do as much as they could to get stuff down here. And so number six was another issue with that too, was gas. We would stay in line. I never forget, I was young, and I never forget that we would bring uh, my, my father, my mother, and myself, and, and one of my older siblings, we would come and bring all the cars and park them uh, in this line to get fuel. And we would stay in that line for hours and it was rationed. It was rationed. We couldn't get a lot of fuel. It was one of those situations where we were just getting just enough basically to get us by for another day or two because the supply issues for gas to get it to us was hard because they didn't have the means to get it to us. And then there was no power. So all these people were dependent on paying with, with cash that they may not have because the people didn't want checks. They didn't want credit cards which caused another issue. And you couldn't get a lot because ultimately they were trying to conserve as much as they could to let everybody get a little bit. So we saw rationed fuel, rationed gas, rationed oil. We see a government right now that's kind of pushing against a lot of petroleum-based options. However, we are still in necessity to those things. So say for instance, all these issues start happening and lastly, now we've used fuel to try to go find water. We've used fuel to try to go find food. We've used fuel to try to get away from some of the civil unrest. We've used fuel to take off our trash or our sewage. Let's think about that for a second, because that's the kind of world that we may be living in. Well, now we don't have any fuel. So how are we going to you know, get gas to fill up our automobiles if it's not there? How are we going to uh, have maybe it's winter or cool and for some of you people in the normal northern climates if you don't have enough fuel to run your 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 heat what are you going to do so number six gas rationing oil rationing or petroleum just not even being in supply because they can't get it to us number seven i think is going to be one of the biggest situations we talked a little bit about medical 
But now all of a sudden, say the doctor's offices are closed, the hospitals are only accepting the worst of the worst because they don't have enough people, they're running off generator power, so they're running very abbreviated. All of a sudden, the doctors are not open to fill prescriptions. Pharmacists are not there. What's gonna happen? We've seen civil unrest. We've seen people not have food and water. We've seen people not have gas. What's next? What if there's no medicine? What if there's no pharmaceuticals? For people who are dependent on pharmaceuticals, even if they're good to, to save our lives, are bad because we're addicted to something, people will go crazy when they cannot get to their pharmacist, their doctors, get those needs fulfilled. Now, not only on the good prescriptions and the good medicines, now let's talk about the fact of the drug users and the people who are used to abusing prescriptions or drugs. You have two groups of people now that are going to lose their mind because they're used to something in their bodies. When we get used to something, it's hard to go without. So when we see vices or we see uh, prescriptions or we see bad situations and bad uses of, of drugs, those are gonna cause even wide array of civil unrest or it's gonna cause more people to loot and try to find other ways to fulfill something that they are not having. So it's gonna be crazy in pandemonium times. Now, what does that lead to? Number eight would be, what are we gonna do with the very ill, the very sick? What are we gonna do with the, our nursing home and our frail and our elderly? What are we gonna do with death? What if we see a lot of death? Remember, if, if medical is down, what if, if the service or funeral industry is down? What if all of a sudden we're not able to take people to get them well? What if our nursing homes are struggling? We saw that in catastrophic situations like earthquakes and hurricanes, but we saw that even during the pandemic where it was kind of shut off from the world. So now we're seeing medical and prescription issues and vice and drug issues that's causing more craziness, more pandemonium, more sickness. Now we're seeing people that are now even more ill, more frail, suicides may be up, homicides may be up, or also just death may be up. It's crazy truths that could happen if all of a sudden we see a major grid shutdown because it is a domino effect. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. I want you to see the hope and the solutions to some of these problems. Now, the reason I wanted to list the problems on the front end because now let's talk about some of the solutions to those. Number one and two, water and food. That is easy. Like we've been preaching to you for years and years and years, grow food, stockpile food, put up food, preserve food, and make sure it's not dependent on the grid. You will have no refrigeration. You will have no way to keep those things cold. Now, do we have fridges and freezers? And yes, you can use those and they will stay cold for a certain amount of time. So the main thing is to utilize those first, but you need to be putting up other means and ways to store water and food. We need to be canning. I did a video on five ways to put up meat. Uh, canning, dehydrating, curing, smoking, freeze drying, all those ways are ways that you can put up any kind of food for it to last a long time. Say you can't do any of that. Buy freeze dried food that's already readily available like My Patriot Supply below. Say go into Walmart and just buying canned foods. But when you do those kind of things, remember you have to have, you have, to have tools to open them. You have to have a, a can opener. You have to have ways to store that food. Make sure you're doing all that you can to store food because that is the first first crazy situation that goes on is everybody runs to the store. So stockpile your goods and foods is key. Water, key. If you have a water well like us, you need to have a hand pump. We're going to do a video on our hand pump. It's, it's off grid. It takes no electricity. It's a simple pull off the cap, putting a line in there where you can pump it out. It's something you can build yourself or you can purchase, but we're going to be doing a video on that very soon. If you do not have a well and you are do or you're not next to a body of water or a creek or moving water that's safe enough to drink or to utilize you need to be stockpiling water you need to be buying uh, purification tablets filtration systems now those are only going to last for a certain amount of time so you need to be buying water storage 55 to 100 gallons of water storage containers now here's what i get all the time people say well i, I don't have ways to store that you have to find ways to store that. It, it becomes so important. When people tell me they cannot prep or they cannot do this or cannot do that, what you're doing is you're saying, I'm willing to go through this and depend on someone else to, to help me. 
don't do that. Find ways that you can store the water. If it's simply buying bottled water, now again, I, I'm not for the plastic that the bottle, uh, bottle water is there. I'm not for you paying for these big gallon jugs, but if that's the only means necessary and you can't stockpile tap water, you can't stockpile well water, or you have no ways to buy these big barrels, then buy bottled water and stick them under your bed. You can literally slide them under your beds or under your clothes in your closet. With energy, uh, we've talked about that. If we don't have energy, we don't have cell phones, we don't have refrigeration. The solution to that is making sure that you have just a generator of some sort. Have a propane generator, have a gas generator, have a solar generator. We've, ha we've talked about a little solar gener generator that you pretty much can save money and buy. Now we've got a big generator coming up that we're gonna be talking about that can help run parts of your house in the next few days. Don't depend on that because fuel will run out. Don't depend on just the solar because remember, if a solar flare is bad enough or an EMP is bad enough, what's to say that your solar panel will be okay too? So we'll be talking about that in our solar generator video that some of the other ways that you can charge that solar generator and hopefully help you with a little bit more energy. But those things are temporary uses. So you need to have a gas or propane or solar generator or a battery backup to get you through a temporary time if it's just a few days, if it's just a few hours, if it's just a few weeks, or if it's just one of those things that you use it only in demand. That may be just to charge something up or just to run a little burner and then turn it off. You need to have a solution of a separate style of power system that you can utilize. Now, that would bring me up to rural areas. You need to know how to have a, a, a little outdoor wood stove. You can pick up a wood stove for a cheap one now. Now you, you need to buy a nicer one as time progresses that's real steel, that's old and antique. But that you can buy a cheaper version of some of those, those uh, stoves and even having a grill to where you can use fire and you can cook and that gives you a form of energy to do the things that you need to do. And say it's boiling water, say it's cooking or heating up something. Having fire is huge and in rural areas you need to have some kind of grill or old wood stove outside that you can utilize not in your home but exterior to your home making sure that you have a stockpile of medicine and hygiene items we've done a video and I'm gonna link the video to the hygiene to the medical and also to the bartering items below that is key you have to make sure that you have hygiene and medical issues covered if you're on uh, antibiotics you need to make sure that you're looking at Jace Medical. We have a Jace Medical uh, link below where you have some antibiotics to get you through any kind of infection that you may be going through that you can't just shake. If it's not viral and it's bacterial, you have to have antibiotics. Maybe there's no way to go to a pharmacy. Maybe there's no way to go to a medical facility. Maybe there's no way to go to someone who can help you write a prescription. You need to have forms of that ready. Now, say you have issues with anaphylaxis. You need EpiPen. Say you have issues with uh, pain you need to have pain relievers you need to have everything you need we have in our medical supply we have an oxygen mask we have respirators we have a, a nebulizer we have all these ways that we want to build this little mini hospital in our home now do we have everything we need absolutely not not even close by piecing together things that can help us medically by piecing together all our hygiene items to where if worse comes to worse we can uh, you know sponge bathe off to keep our our body safe or we can you know have deodorant and and toothbrushes and toothpaste to keep our health of our mouth doing well that's important because ultimately the more that we are not dependent on having to go the more that we can take care of our bodies while we're going through this catastrophe or this collapse or this solar issue the better so i'm going to link the hygiene and medical videos below because they are key now that brings up the other point if financial institutions are closed we see bank holidays maybe the banks are not open i know during our areas here the banks couldn't open it was no effect but the hurricane just knocked everything out so they just could not open if that happens to you do you have bartering items do you have your assets at your home do you have the needs and capabilities to have some cash at your home smaller bills where people can utilize them things that you can buy your fuel with if you're standing in a line things that you could buy your food with if you're standing in a line because remember if the card system is not working if people don't want to check because ultimately they can't cash your check if the banks are closed you need to have assets and bartering tools that you can utilize to provide for your family so cash definitely have cash have ways that you can have you know a currency i'm gonna link the bartering video below because if you don't have cash 
or people don't want cash, they maybe want something that you can barter. So I'm gonna link you some of the things that I think you could have for bartering below, and that will help you maybe get some of the things that you need by also providing for other folks. Lastly, you can't do this alone. When we talk about an EMP shutdown, if your cell phones are not working, say your walkie-talkies and your low-frequency CBs, all that's not working. Say some of, the, some of them are, that's great. But you need to make sure that you, your family, your community, people at your church, or people that you have been close to know a good meeting point. That if all of a sudden, you know, a, a, a stuff hits the fan kind of situation happens, that y'all have a game plan, that you have friends who believe in what you're doing and you can have those relationships still there. You cannot do this alone. We are a family of eight. Uh, my son and my oldest daughter are awesome. They're growing up learning these things. They, they know how to light a fire uh, by hand without matches. They know how to, uh, you know, Aiden knows how to harvest animals with no problem. We know how to live on our land. However, we still need help. So we have friends, we have family. If this happens, everybody needs to meet here so we can get a game plan together. If this happens, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna provide this, I'm gonna provide this, we're gonna provide this. So like for instance, on our farm, if we have a body of water and we have a well, we may be the place that provides that. If we have the farm, it may be that we're providing for your animals to eat without having to buy feed. If, if the other person is uh, someone who has a, a monster propane generator and he's able to bring it, then he will bring it here and we can utilize it that way. You have to build those relationships to help each other. If we're working together, we have a better chance of going through these issues without going through the crisis that a lot of people are going through. Remember, if people are crazy, if people don't have food, people don't have water, people don't have medicine, whew, it's key, those will cause more crisis. If we're in a military situation where there's a national style policing with militia, you know, what's, what's to say that's gonna be any better? What about the civil unrest that they're trying to hone in on? We're gonna see a lot of those things. If we see those things, but if we're in numbers and we're working together, some of those situations may not affect us as much because we can protect what we have here. So we see the problems, but I hope you see the solutions. Nothing about going through any crisis or collapse or any natural disaster or any event like that would be easy. I'm not gonna say you're gonna go through it by like eating milk and cookies and playing on a rainbow. I'm not saying that, but I am saying when you set solutions up for the problems that may come and you're prepping the solutions for the problems that are in front of us, you have a better chance of going through all this stuff and having some, some sense, some common sense to work you through it and to go through whatever is thrown our way. Having a grounded faith and knowing that Jesus is in control and God is in control is going to make it easier. When all the craziness and pandemonium is going on, knowing that you have got a grounded faith in Christ, knowing that He's, protect, he's taking care of you no matter what the situation is, is key. He gives us knowledge, he gives us wisdom, he gives us smarts to do these other things to prep and to prepare. Don't let naysayers tell you it's not coming, it's not gonna happen. If it doesn't, then you've got a lot of food and water you can eat over time. You've got great relationships and friends that you've built just in case. You have extra fuel, you have extra grass, you have extra propane that you can use because the price is going up anyway. So nothing that we've talked about in this video by prepping for some of these situations is bad. By having these things, it gets you ready, to survive what crisis could come. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Ultimately, be grounded in Christ. That's the key. And knowing that he gives us wisdom and knowledge to go through and to prep and get ready for all the things that we may face. God bless, guys. Happy Wednesday, y'all.